Hi guys, so today I am going to talk about identity and how society and mass communication have forced us to be extremely bad at empathy and not only imagining other people complexly, but imagining their problems complexly. So today's video comes to you in four parts. Part one, queerness. Part two, Two, Latina. Part three, feminism. Part four, depression. Part one, queerness. This is easily the easy, <laughs> easily the easiest. My queerness is the easiest identity that I have ever accepted. One day, when I was 13, I caught myself checking out another girl's ass. And I was just like, oh, okay, maybe I'm bisexual. And for years and years, about five years, um, I accepted this idea that I was bisexual, even when I found out about pansexuality and the ideas of multiple genders, not just male and female, I still didn't accept the idea of pansexuality for me because it didn't sound right in my head. So I eventually accepted the mantle of multisexuality and how it fit better with me than either bisexuality or pansexuality. I've never had a sexuality crisis, and I've had many problems with other people because of my sexuality, but I have never had problems with myself because of my sexuality. Part 2, Latina. I have not always accepted myself as Mexican. Growing up, I always thought of myself as white, not just because I'm light-skinned, but because I couldn't speak Spanish, and so to me, my Mexican heritage was this part of myself that was barred from me. I felt like I would not be accepted by the Latino community because of my light skinness and because of my failure to speak Spanish, my failure to immerse myself into that culture. I felt like there was a language barrier between this part of me and the rest of me. However, as I have learned Spanish, and learning Spanish feels like greeting an old friend, um, as I have learned Spanish and learned about the culture, as I have accepted this as part of myself that is not defined by my skin color and not defined by my language speaking abilities, I have reconciled myself with the Latino community and I have found out that it was not the Latino community holding me back because while a few Latinos have been surprised to find out that I am Mexican, none of them have said that I don't belong, none of them have actually disbelieved me. However, when it comes to white people, I have had those feelings. So the problem was not the Latino community, the problem was the white community and their inability to accept me as Latina. Part 3, Feminism. I have not always identified myself as a feminist, and in fact, there are many, many young men and women and non-binary people who refuse to acknowledge themselves as feminism, feminists despite the fact that they believe in equal treatment for all genders and sexes. And this is a little bit ridiculous. This is part of the demonization of feminism in American society. And because we have this idea of feminists as man-hating, all men are rapists, um, we want women to be better off than any other gender sort of thing. And not only that, but it also is because of the failure for everyone, not just men, to recognize that equal treatment for women is not, in fact, better treatment for women than it is for men. And we have this thing in American society where when we start treating uh, certain groups equally to other groups, we somehow view it as taking away this other group's rights when that is not, in fact, the case. One very good example for this is street harassment. Street harassment is when a young woman is walking down the street, someone honks their car, or someone cat calls them and says, hey baby, or shouts their number, or walks up to them and tries to hit on them. Um, this can be a very scary experience for women a lot of the times, because we don't know what this guy is going to do. And in fact, there have been lots of instances where when the woman says no, they have been shot at, they have been stabbed, they have been assaulted in many different ways, and attacked. Um, and yet, when we talk about ending street harassment, uh, many men 
say that it's impeding on their rights for free speech. Part four, depression. Um, I suffer from a light case of depression and um, it has affected me so severely that I have had to temporarily drop out of college. Um, I'm still enrolled in the college, don't worry. Um, but I'm, that's the reason I'm not attending this semester, that's the reason I'm $10,000 in debt to my university, which hopefully will be repealed now that I have a diagnosis. And I used to be one of those people who believed that I was my own problem, that the reason that I was not happy was because I was choosing to be unhappy, that the choices I were making every day were causing me to be unhappy. And the whole reason this stopped was because of these fucking little pills, okay? It took a couple of weeks. It took, like, about one week for me to start feeling the effects. Now, let me tell you something. The first time I put on glasses, I did not realize how bad my vision was. And when I put on glasses, it's like the world was suddenly clearer. I didn't know I had bad vision, but once I put on the glasses, I realized I did. That's what going on the pills was like. I didn't realize that I was so unhappy and that there was nothing for me to do about it but take pills, okay? And then I started taking the pills and suddenly I was happy all the time. I was naturally happy even though my behavior had not changed. I felt much more productive. I wanted to do more things. These It made me more productive because I didn't want to just sit around doing nothing. I didn't, I felt the need to do something and the interest to continue doing things. And that's part of our society. We tell ourselves that we are our own problems. And that's not necessarily true. It is true for some people, it is not true for everyone, but because it is true for most people, we say it's true for everyone, and we don't put addendums, we don't include everyone when we speak. And that can be a very hard thing to accept, that can be a block between people accepting their identities. I don't tend to think of myself as mentally ill, though I definitely fall under that very, very large and diverse group of people. But that's because of the way we, as a society, have set up the idea of mentally ill people, and because I do not fit in with that caricature, because of that, it is harder for me to accept myself as mentally ill. We are not imagining this large and diverse group of people as large and diverse or complex. We are not imagining these individuals as complex. We are instead imagining them as other. We are taking their traits and enhancing them until they are almost irrecognizable to what they actually are. And that is what I have to say about identity. I will see you guys next week.